Tammy with Real Southern Woman. I'm a little early tonight, but me and Chris have uh, finalized a few things and we're ready to start a little show that we watch. So I thought I would go ahead and come on and do our Bible study. Today is August the 26th and our Bible study is on direction. And um, it is in John 5 verse 30, but I'm going to first start out in Hebrew because we've been talking from Hebrew and I just think this is a beautiful passage and we still haven't got to read it. So I want to read it right quick. That is um, Hebrew chapter 9. And I'm going to start with verse 11. So I'm flipping over there now. I hope y'all are having a good Monday. Me and Chris have had a good day. And um, May texted me today and said she's coming in the weekend for uh, Labor Day. And so I'm excited about that. I do miss her, I have to say. I do. <laughs> so anyway, um, Hebrew chapter 9. Oh, and I came in this morning. I mean, I went on this morning and I did a video and I actually put on Real Southern Woman <laughs> instead of Colored Valley Cooks. And I, I don't even think I took it off a of Real Southern Woman. I can't remember if I did or not. But anyway, um, I just pressed the wrong platform. Um, but we're going to look in chapter 9 and we're going to start with verse 11. I just think this is beautiful. I hope that if you have a Bible you can read it with me. So if you want to flip over there you can. And Hebrew is after like it's in the New Testament and it's you know it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Romans, Corinthians, then Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, first and second Timothy, and then you got the you get to Hebrew. Okay? If you can't figure out where it is, sometimes it's kind of it's kind of tucked in the middle, it's kind of hard to find sometimes. But it says the heavenly sanctuary, and I just think this is really pretty, so I wanted to read this. It gives us lots of hope and um, it should give us joy to read this. And it says, But Christ came. Because if it wasn't for what Christ did, being a Gentile like I am, not a, you know, I'm not a Jew, um, without the period of grace that we're in, I couldn't have been able to be, um, had the salvation that is a free, a free gift to all who believe now. And so this is just a beautiful passage. And that is, it says, But Christ came as high priest of the good things to come, with the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands, that is, not of his creation, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood he entered into the most holy place once and for all, having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the sprinkling the unclean sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God and for this reason he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. So I thought that was just really uh, beautiful. So I wanted to read that. And now we'll flip over in our book. And that is Jesus, Our Perfect Hope with Charles Stanley. Today is the 26th of August. And our lesson is talking about direction. And it's talking about, I do not seek my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Okay? It says there are four, four questions we are wise to ask God daily. Number one, what do you want me to do, God? It says God desires to reveal his will to you, so ask him to show you his goals for the day. Be open to the prompts of the Holy Spirit and trust him to guide you. Number two, how do you want me to act? For everything that God desires to accomplish, he has a plan that is detailed and specific. So ask him 
how to proceed with the objectives he has given you. When do you want me to act? And how can I best represent you today? It says, we often fail because we get ahead of God. So ask him to help you stay on his schedule. The Lord will work through you to influence others. So ask him to mold you into an even greater likeness of Christ as you carry out his will. Listen closely for God's answers to your questions and then begin to act. In this way, you know you are making the most of your day. So we should ask God, um, what would he have us to do today? And how would he have us to act? And, and um, so that we can implement his will in our life. And we should know that his will more than anything else is for us to let him live through us and represent him uh, so that others would want to follow him. And tell him, of course, the gospel. So... Um, so many of us want to seek out something that's crazy or a miracle or something special and we want God to give us signs and we don't even have to do all that. If we'll just follow his will, which is to spread the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, everything else will fall into place, okay? Um, Amy's in there in the bathroom, so she's running the water and washing her face and doing all that and stuff. It's kind of noisy. I actually turned on the fan. <laughs> but um, I hope y'all had a good day. I see Deb is here. And it's good to see you, Deb. And um, y'all continue to pray for Pastor Jack and my sister. And, um, and I've had a couple of special requests that's been sent to me. So I'll just say those are unspoken requests. So uh, y'all just remember to pray for each other. And I, I don't know what else to say. Patricia says, hello, Tammy. Hey, Patricia. I'm going to show y'all something that I found. I'm trying to clean out some stuff because if we sell the house next year when Amy graduates, which is what we plan to do, I have got to weed out some stuff. And y'all, I've never been one to be real sentimental and keep a lot of stuff. But I was going through my cedar chest. And I found a couple of things from the kids when they were babies. Um, and I only kept, I'm not the kind of woman that would have kept a lot of stuff. I only kept the gown that I had their pictures made in when they were babies. And I kept two outfits. And that was it. And uh, when I pulled them out of the bag, y'all, they actually, because May never spit up, ever. I mean, she didn't. But when Amy was born, the child left a trail everywhere she went. And she always had stomach problems, and she has irritable bowel syndrome now. So, uh, but even as a baby, she did. But when I pulled these out, y'all, they had spit up on them. I was so embarrassed. I thought... Now, Tammy, as picky as you've always been, you, you put these baby clothes up in that bag with spit up on them. And how many years has that been? Amy is 17 years old. Y'all, I got them out of that bag. Both of them had spit up on them. I sprayed them with shout. I let them sit overnight in the wash machine. Took them out. I, I put them in a um, linen I don't know if y'all have them or not, but I use them for all of my sweaters, for things like this, for bras. But I use the linen bags that you can buy at Walmart, and they come in different sizes, and they have them for bras. And you can put your special things inside them and then put them in the washer. Well, I put these in the washer with whites and bleach because I really wanted them to come clean. And look how pretty they are. This is the... Um, Rose Cottage one, and it's perfect. I mean, it come out just perfect. No, it's not stained anywhere, so it did really, really well in the bag, and the shout worked perfect after 17 years. Can you believe that? And then this one was one that somebody made me when they were babies, and it has little bloomers that match it. Isn't it cute? And it came perfectly clean. 
There's absolutely no stains. It has different colors in the thread, but there's absolutely no stain at all on it anywhere. So the shout worked. Aren't they cute? After 17 years. I'm so excited. So um I I felt I got I got these the other day when I bought I'm trying to remember what I bought with these weird hangers. I don't think it was a bra. Um but anyway, so I hung them up like this on these little hangers. Aren't they cute? But yes, I found those. I meant to show them to y'all last week and I forgot. But this little rose cottage one, it's a size three to six months. Both of them are kind of, you know, they're not newborns. But the, um, when, when I had babies, all I used were those newborn gowns because you change their diaper so much that um, it's so much easier just to pull their gown up change their diaper than to have to pull off clothes. And so if I ever got a girl anything for a newborn baby, it was always gowns. But they're cute. I'm excited about that. Well, so who knows? We may have to pass those down if my girls ever have babies, right? And um, and then I kept the gown that I had these pictures. There's my mama. But when I had May, I cut all my hair off because she was my firstborn. And oh my goodness, was it hard. I was 29. See, I was 30 when she was born. So I kept that little gown. And I still have the gown that I'm wearing in the, in the uh, picture. Of course, I probably can't get in it. And then this is when I had Amy. And so I had her 15 months later, and so she's wearing that little gown as well. But um, they both had plenty of hair when I had them. And I'm, I'm so young there. I wish I still felt like I did back then, y'all. I said, you realize we're getting a little older. It's kind of hard to believe our kids are, are moving, you know, going to college. And he said, yeah. I said... We just, you know, we just have to face the fact, the face, you know, the, the blessing is that you're still here to enjoy each other, and you're still here to enjoy your children. I'm going to be honest with y'all, I never thought after having that cancer like I did, and it being as aggressive as it was, that I, I, I would have never been able to dream that I would have made it this far out, and so it's very exciting. So every year that, that God gives me, I try to be thankful for. Because um, I'm not as thankful as I was in the beginning. Because after you've had cancer and you, and you survive, like that first spring when you see the buttercups bloom. And everything is so fresh and new and just so beautiful. And you're worried, you know, that you might not see it the following year. And now... Um, I'm not, I'm not quite scared, you know, I'm not scared to death anymore, but plus I know I'm going to heaven, so I don't, I don't get worried or anything, but um, I will say that I am thankful to God that he has me here, and I can't believe that I got to wash my baby's clothes 17 years later, and all the spit up's gone. <laughs> so anyway... I hope y'all have a blessed night, and I guess I'll go in here and watch TV with my husband, and so we'll say our prayers. And some of y'all, I think, got a little upset because I said I was going to stop at the palm readers and have her read my palm, and I'm not going to do that. I'm just kidding. I, I like to play and have fun. And some people just take everything I say so serious. Y'all need to liven up a little bit and have a, and laugh, and, and you know, have fun with life. It's fun. So laugh and enjoy it. And don't be, you know, so prudish. And it's okay, you know. But anyway, let's say our prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today. And we thank you for the life that you've given us through your shed blood. So that we can live forever in heaven. So that we can be forgiven and um, be a part of the family of God, even if we are Gentiles. And I know you came to save the whole world, not just Jews. 
but also the Gentile people, which I am, and I thank you for that. I thank you for doing your Father's will, because that's the will that placed us where we are in heavenly places spiritually. And I thank you uh, for that very much, and I hope that we would want to do His will as well, and that you would help us with your Holy Spirit to be more in tune with the spiritual um, part of our being so that we can seek um, you first. In Christ's name we pray, amen. I hope y'all have a good evening, and um, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye, I love you.